There are 12 athletes in total then, lining up for the men's hammer. First of all, we meet the teenage Ukrainian, Mikhailo Kokan, who is just 18 years of age, a world junior silver medalist. Next up is the world leader, the European champion and a twice world bronze medalist, Wojciech Nowitzki of Poland. 81-74, he's produced this season. Nick Miller of Great Britain, the Commonwealth Games champion. Great Britain have never medalled in the men's hammer at the World Championship. He's got a chance of changing that. From Belarus, he was fourth at the World Student Games this year. We welcome Gleb. Next we see Gleb Dudarev representing Belarus, who finished fourth at the World Student Games. He's at university in Kansas. He was the NCAA silver medalist this year in the US Collegiate Championships. Javier Chenfuegos of Spain, he's only 29, but he competed 10 years ago in Berlin in 2009 at the World Championships as a teenager. From the United States of America, Next we see Rudy Winkler of the US, who came second in the US Championships this year. Two-time champion, though, through a PB of 77.06 in qualifying. Comes here into the final in excellent form. European Championship bronze medalist from Hungary, Ben Chalash. 76-90 was his mark in qualifying. There'll be a good reception for the next man we're going to hear. Ashraf El Saifi of Qatar, twice a world junior champion, took the Asian silver medalist here. The Frenchman Quentin Bigot will be next, who finished just outside the medals, fourth at London 2017. The best of 78 metres and 58. We welcome the Norwegian Throwing at position 10 will be Elvin Henriksen, national record holder of Norway. Took his time to get into qualifying yesterday. Came through as one of the next best qualifiers rather than an automatic qualifier. Just in short of the 76.50 mark. Yevgeny Korotovsky, an authorised neutral athlete competing for uh, here rather, the Russian, 77-29, his lifetime best. And last but by no means least, three times the world champion, the last three editions, Pavel Fajdek of Poland, 2013, 2015 and 2017. OK, let's pick up the first throw of the men's hammer final then, Mikhailo Kokan. 76.56 is Mark in qualifying. It's gone out left towards the left edge of the sector, but it's around about that 75 metre line. That's a solid enough start for Kokan. Yeah, that really is. And you got a good look there. I love that camera shot out into the throwing area. See the area where these guys have to, they have to thread the needle getting that hammer out there. It's all about timing. Look at the good, look at the good footwork down on the left there. Your launch parameters, 40 degrees. Maybe wants to just be a bit higher than that, but not a bad opener. 100 kilometers an hour, that's a, a good release speed as well. That's been a, the benchmark we've seen. A lot of people going over 100 have really producing some fine throws. Wojciech Nowitzki, the world leader, bronze medalist at the last two editions of the championships. Behind his compatriot, Pavel Fajdek. We're expecting a Polish battle for the upper echelons of that medal podium. Nowitzki, 77-89 in qualifying. His world lead mark is 81-74. Well, while his compatriot has enjoyed more titles, this, this gentleman is throwing better this season. But it's nice that you've got, a, you've got a countryman that you're battling with for the number one spot in the world. Well, they're both 30 years of age. They've been around exactly the same amount of time. Their overall battles, by the way, 74-13 in favour of Fidek, but Nowitzki has beaten him 10 times in 2018 and 19. So he's having an impact and he started with 76-25. Well, that wasn't a very good throw by his standards. He bounced the ball off the ring there. He could tell that that ball got so far ahead of his lower body, it was all he could do to stay in the ring. The voice of Dan O'Brien alongside us here on the IAAF World Athletics Championships coverage from the Khalifa Stadium in Doha. Three times a world champion in the decathlon as we see Great Britain's Nick Miller, the Commonwealth Games champion. He's had three British records to his name. He currently holds it at 80 metres and 26.
We'll be looking for that one to be heading out, and that's over 75 metres as well. Again, an overturn, a little bit of an overturn at the end, and it just sounds like that hammer is so close to the ground, it could even be... Let's see what he does on this last turn. Yeah, that's fantastic footwork. He just overturns it a little bit. 100 kilometers per hour, 37 degrees. He's got to get that. He's got to get that angle of release up. Miller not happy. 75-31. But this stage in a, in a final, how much is there about getting one on the board early? I mean, it's it's not far enough, but it's something to build on. Well, you got you have to look at the competition as a preliminary and then a final. You got three throws to make it into the finals. You do want to throw far right now, and this throw could win you the gold medal. However. You want to be able to be there in the end and take your last three throws. Duderev of Belarus, the first one to really give it some vocal encouragement, and that's gone sailing out over 75 as well. And we've seen all four throws so far pretty much be in the same region, around about that 76 metres, there or thereabouts. And there's his coach just saying, oh, it's close. It's close. So you see him step over. It's a heel toe. You're moving from heel to toe, stepping over with the ball trailing you that whole time so many forces want to pull you out of the middle of the ring and that's why it's so important that these guys are really strong through their core really strong in the lower body these guys are built just a little bit differently than the discus throwers discus throwers were a little bit taller had longer arms for sure these guys have really strong torsos javier chenfregos of spain 76 80 he produced in qualifying shorter 75 meters but he was pointing right almost like a golfer who shanked one off the tee into the trees he uh, got his lines and angles wrong there yeah you could see his line was heading down the right side and that just you start down the right side at the beginning and it's so difficult to correct that get back up get back up through the middle and these guys know if they don't travel in the right direction, they're just not going to get. They're just not going to get as much power on that ball. And a hammer that goes right is not what you're looking for, is it? The way you're, you're swinging with the, that, the turn in that direction, you don't want to be going right, do you? Oh, absolutely not. And you got it right. It's like it's like a, a shank, shank in golf. You're just heading the wrong direction. This is Vinc Halash of Hungary, the European bronze medalist in round one. Looks happy. Oh, that's why. That's heading out towards that 80 meter line. He knew it let a good one go there, did Bench Halash in round one. The leading mark before that was 76 25. So wait for the measurement on that one. He's launched it out at 101 plus Ks per hour. That's heading out towards that 80 meter line. Looks about what? 77, 78 maybe? I hate guessing because I always get proved wrong. 78-18, so Halash sails to the top of the leaderboard. Well, that's a nice start for him. Only 22 years old, that young man. Here is Fidek, the defending champion, in the first round. Has he got a response to what he's just seen from Halash? Oh, yes, he has. Oh. He's peppering the 80-meter line as well. <laughs> Look how solid he was in that finish. Oh, it's such a confident stride out of the ring man he is just grounded where does the power come from it comes from the ground you can't throw these implements if you're in the air you've got to have both feet on the ground to deliver the blow and he's just so balanced afterwards 79 34 for Fidek, and again it's a sight that his fans will love to see his name slipping from the bottom of the leaderboard, catapulting above everybody right to the top. But this is no wiki in the second round. We're in the hammer, the world leader, Wojciech Nowitzki. Draws it on its way. And again, it's around about that uh, 76, 77 meter right line, isn't it? We had the medal winning graphics in there to show you where the current gold, silver, and bronze marks were. What do you make of this one, Dan? Well, he's got a, an interesting release. He releases it a little bit low. You see, he doesn't turn all the way through that. He stays nice and grounded. It's almost like he's scooping it just, just a little bit. 
But big yell out of him. That's a little bit different technique than we've seen all night long. 76-50 nudges him up the standings. One place closer to that man, Pavel Fidek, the current leader, who looks as cool as the cucumber and probably would do when you're currently leading the World Championship, as Bigo of France, who is in fourth position, the same position he finished fourth in the London 2017 final. And Bigo in uh, round one produced 76-34. That's uh, heading towards 80 metres. Maybe just shy, but certainly nearer 80 than 75, I think. Well, that was a pretty good throw. He didn't seem to like it very much, but man, it really sailed out there. Nice footwork, good release. Just said, ah, I just missed it by a little bit, but that is out there. Only about a meter short of the of the leaders. It's probably a nice surprise when you think you've missed it, and then actually, whether it catches a bit of wind or something, it goes a little bit better than you thought. 78.06 lifts him into third. Here's the event leader, Pavel Fidek. Nobody over 80 meters as yet. This is round two. Oh! Someone is now. The leader extends his lead. Just casual, casual as a cucumber as well. Comes out of the ring, just chewing his gum. Boom, but look at the ground. Look at how he's so grounded and he's so solid as he releases that ball. Just nobody is on balance quite like he is. Well, my colleague Rob Walker was saying yesterday in qualifying that the ground was shaking when uh, these guys were entering the arena. 80 meters, 16 for Fidek. Henriksen. That is heading out towards, uh, where are we there? About so between 75 and 80. So Henriksen, who was in fourth position. Again, it's angle coming in just below the Optum, which is about, about 45 degrees, isn't it, Dan? Well, and he was a little bit slow as well. We've seen a lot of the far throws up about 100 kilometers per hour. 77-38 for Henriksen, again, people nudging up the leaderboard by a place or two here. Chen Fregos of Spain in the hammer. Getting that 76-metre region. The winning mark from London, by the way, two years ago was 79-81 from Fidek, who's already gone past that here in Doha. Poland looking to continue their status as the most decorated nation in hammer throwing. Four World Championship golds previously, three of them, of course, claimed by the man who's chasing a fourth successive, Fidek. Chen Frego, 76-57 in fifth position. Dudorov of Belarus in round four. 76 metres dead, his best so far. Oh, oh, no improvement. Well, these guys didn't waste any time at all. Whittling the field to eight. They start the competition right up. Here they are in the fourth round. Guys are going to have to start reaching down deep just a little bit, trying some things, trying a little bit extra to catch the leader now. 80 meters, 16. <laughs> uh. Henriksen and the hammer, this is round four. That one is heading out again over the 70 meter line, but short of 75. So Henriksen currently in fifth position overall was 77-38. The fact we're into the second half of the competition now, by the way, means that we are down to a field of eight who are throwing in reverse order from uh, eight through to the leader, Pavel Fidek, who will now throw last in each round. Those eliminated, by the way, Nick Miller of Great Britain, Rudy Winkler of the US, Ashraf El-Safi and 
Korotowski, the authorised neutral athlete. You can see the four at the bottom of the list there on the uh, left-hand side, eliminated from the competition. Well, Quentin Bigo. Well, that's a disappointing finish for Nick Miller on the season. 75-31 on his first attempt, and then two fouls, and you just don't want to go out with fouls like that. Bigo, always heading out towards 80 metres. Now, those lines we're seeing are superimposed rather than being fixed bits of tape in the ground in most of those occasions so hard to tell exactly where that's landed but it's best for 7806 before that short of that 80 meter line it comes in at 78 19 so a relatively consistent series from Bigo. well i was going to say he's very consistent 76 34 78 06 77 89 and here he goes 78 19 he's in the groove just makes some small changes and he jumps up to the silver medal position and he nudges above halash who is in the circle now the hungarian european bronze medalist he's just seen himself nudge down a place we saw yesterday in the women's jab in how things can change very quickly, even just in the final round. So here we are, a couple of fouls. So Hash needs to rediscover his groove here in the fourth round. Looks away in disgust, and that's why. Well, it looked like it slipped off his glove there just a little bit, but that ball was certainly ahead of the position that he wanted it to be in. So, but like I said, guys are going to have to start reaching down deep, doing something a little bit different, making a little bit, making a little bit more effort. And when they do that, you're bound to make mistakes. Well, Halash walked out the front when he saw where that landed, so that one uh, registered as a foul. He remains in third position with his first round throw of 78-18 as the event leader, Pavel Fidek of Poland, comes into the circle. The only thrower over 80 metres so far, he's two metres clear. Excellent Polish support for their front two competitors here. At the moment, Nowitzki's got some work to do because he's in fourth position with his best of 77-42. Can Fidek go further than 80-12? Oh, I think he can! <laughs> Well, that one, there was a real, for want of a better phrase, a real whoosh as that one left the hammer for the circle. Well, it looked like he didn't get his line quite right. And like he might have let that go just a little bit early. But he was just spinning so fast. His turns were exceptional. Look how grounded he is, and he's over the 80-meter mark once again. Fidek extends his lead, 80 meters and 50 centimeters. Now the rest really have got it all on to catch him. Nowitzki, remember, his compatriot, has beaten him ten times in the last couple of years. So we're back with Nowitzki in the hammer here. This is round number five. For the pole, he's actually just waiting outside the cage because Dudarev is waiting for his measurement, which is coming at 74.46, so he's in only an eighth position, the Belarusian. A good improvement by Kokan in the fifth round. He's gone up to fifth with 77 metres and 39. But only two throws remaining for Wojciech Nowitzki to try and catch his teammate. A consistent series there so far. 76-25. He's improved with every throw. Take out the foul. The legal throws have improved every time. But fourth place is not the position that you want to finish in. He definitely wants to move up. These pole fans would love to see a couple of medals by two of the best throwers in the world. Red flag for Nowitzki. So that is a bit of a disaster with one remaining. A shake of the head. That's his second foul in his last three. And the world bronze medalist from the last two editions of these championships has got it all on to repeat that feat. Well, and it's crazy too, because that is that was a far enough throw to put him in the medals. He just couldn't stay in. Well, a foul for Nowitzki keeps him in fourth position. Just adds a bit of hope to those behind as well. Shenfuegos. 
Remember, he competed 10 years ago in Berlin at just the age of 19. Here he is 10 years later, still on the world final stage. But as you can see, he's down in seventh. He's got to find a metre and a half here. It's doable. Well, this is right when things changed in the women's javelin, that sixth round, and your coach is telling you all it takes is one. One good throw. Make some changes. Get on balance. Be a little quicker. Be a little snappier with that finish. So, Shen Fuegos. This is the one that has to count for him. It is the sixth and final round for the Spaniard. To get near the medals, he's got to go over 78. Ah! He's gone right. And as we heard from Dan O'Brien, that is not good. He's short of 75, and he won't be troubling those top three. His coach knew it. He knew it. Just placement in the feet at the very, very end. Put on the brakes a little bit. And he said, oh, that one's to the right. Shanked it. Yeah, shanking the hammer. You can see from where the officials are positioning themselves as well, where they're, the, uh, they're expecting it to go. As we see Henriksen now, the Norwegian, the national record holder of Norway with 78.25 currently in sixth position. He likes it, he really likes it. It's short of 80 metres though, and it's not, I don't think, going to trouble the medals potentially. His puff out of the cheeks suggests that it wasn't quite as good as he thought it was going to be. Well, nice big yell. He's really on balance. He's definitely liked it. Launch parameters there, 39.5 and a half degrees, 97. He's got to get that speed up just a little bit. Let's see 99 or 100. We'll wait for the measurement for Henriksen. It is 77.07, so it's no improvement for him. He remains in sixth position. And Fidek ticks them off one by one. The challenges that fall short of his mark. The teenager, just 18 years of age, Mikhailo Kokan. What a stage to make at 18, a World Championship final. He's in fifth position. He's got a chance of a medal. Five throws, all fair. And he's just slowly improving on each and every one. Has to go over 78 metres to trouble the top three. And again, it looks agonisingly short, unfortunately. But fifth place on your World Championship debut. Well, what a experience to be out there with the best throwers in the world competing against them in one of the most stressful competitions he's ever been in and with the amount of development that his body probably has still got to do and the strengthening up i mean he's going to be a name to watch absolutely you see this young man next year and then in four years in paris 2024 he could be the man so kokan will finish in fifth position and now we really do get to the business end of the men's hammer can Nowitzki trouble the medal positions? Looming in the background, his teammate Fidek currently in the gold medal position. Nowitzki in fourth. They say it's the worst place to finish. He won a bronze in 2015 and 2017. Can he take something home from Doha? Roars it on. Oh, oh, I tell you what, it's going to be close, and he knows it's close. I'm not sure if it's enough, Dan. What's your thoughts? Well, those lines are throwing me off just a little bit, and just when you think it's an 80-meter throw, that's not the 80-meter line, that's the silver line or the bronze line, and I'm thinking, it's there, but it's not. But look at that speed. Look at that speed, 103.4 kilometers per hour. Big yell. I would have loved to have seen to get his launch angle up just a little bit more. If he did, it's out there. Well, we wait for the distance. It's 77.69, so it isn't enough for Nowitzki, who congratulates his teammate. That guarantees that obviously his teammate had a medal guaranteed anyway, but Nowitzki now not in the medals. So Halash, who's fouled three times, but as you said, if you can land one in the first round, it could be the medal-winning throw, and at the moment it is. Oh, he's gone way left. Will it stay in the sector? 
Oh, let's have a look what the official's going to decide there. It's not enough for Heidek. He gets the white flag from the official in the circle, but he concedes. Well, the rule is if it touches the white line, then there, it's a markable throw. If the chalk flies, then they mark it. But you could tell that it was not enough for him to move up into second position. So Halash will settle for the bronze, which he took at the European Championships in Berlin last year. It is a foul officially in that uh, final round as it came in short. So Halash, four fouls out of his six throws. Not the series that he'd be looking to put together, but if you could still throw four fouls and get a medal, it's not all bad. So Fidek again watches on, marauds around as the final thrower that can deny him a fourth successive world title, Quentin Bigo of France. And Bigo's not happy with that one as it heads out to the right. It's short of 80 metres, so Bigo will take the silver and that will guarantee a fourth successive world title for Pavel Fidek of Poland. What a performance that is over such a consistent period of time. Well, and he's going to take another throw, which just is for the fans. He absolutely loved that. We've seen that in a couple of different <laughs> throws. Daniel Stahl had the competition one and he got in there, tried to throw a big one for the fans, but an exciting oh, oh. hammer competition. But the king of the hammer takes home another title. Vigo absolutely delighted with his silver, having placed fourth two years ago. This time he's in the medals. And it is a throw of honor for Pavel Fidek, the 30-year-old from Poland, the European champion in 2016. Didn't even make the Olympic final in 2012 or in Rio 2016. The Olympics haven't been his event, but boy, the World Championships have. What can he produce? Just for the fans, this final one. The title is won. Can he go sailing out further than 80 metres and 50 centimetres? The pressure-free throw is short of 80 metres. He won't care a jot. Pavel Fidek of Poland is the world champion for the fourth time in a row. Unstoppable in the hammer. Wow, he just came up with the big throws when he needed them the most. And Steve! He put the pressure on everybody in the field. Once you get that 80 meter throw, you've got everybody looking out at that line and they're thinking, I haven't thrown that far all year long. I've got to do something a little extra. And you take everybody out of your game. So it was just a masterful performance by somebody who knows how to come up big when the pressure's on. Well, it is Poland again in the men's hammer, the most decorated hammer-throwing nation at the World Championships. Once more, add to their gold medal collection. Great silver for Vigo of France, though. Again, having experienced the pain of finishing in fourth place two years ago, upgrading it to a silver this time around. But it's the Polish fans who are delighted. Pretty sure that feeling never gets tiring. Four times a world champion. That takes some doing to maintain that domination over not just the eight years of competition, but everything that goes into the run-up to it as well. Probably the most surprising result is that Nowitzki finished outside the medals, given the form that he's been showing. Well, that, I think, is the biggest surprise of this competition. I fully expected in that fifth or sixth round that Nowitzki was going to get in there, get in, get in there and put the pressure on the rest of the field as well. But he just seemed off from the beginning. He just couldn't find his rhythm, couldn't find that line that he wanted to throw down. He had a couple of big throws, but his feet were not in the right place. And that foul, I think that foul that he foot fouled might have been the one that got him in the medals. So celebrations for Fidek. We still have here to come on the track, of course, the 400 metres in the decathlon, which will be our closing event of the night. But coming up in just a few minutes' time, the men's 110 metres hurdles final. We've had a dramatic night of action here. We've had a couple of favourites not making it through in certain events. We've had the glory for Dina Asher-Smith in a new British record time. And now glory for Poland's Pavel Fidek with that winning throw of 80 metres 50 from Bigo 78-19. Halash took the bronze, Nowitzki misses the medals, and Kokan, look out for him, the 18-year-old, a PB in a world final at 18.